Hello, today I thought I would talk a little bit about uh, Windows subsystem for Linux and how I tend to use it. So first things first, uh, there is a little bit of misnomer here. We should not call it Windows subsystem for Linux, rather we should call it a Linux subsystem for Windows because it's a Linux environment running in a Windows operating system, right? Um, that said, I have named my project WSL Setup. Uh, link in the description to the distribute uh, to the repo if you if you guys are curious to check it out the idea is simple uh, i use my wsl setup for my everyday work to ssh into remote servers uh, so it needs to be capable of let's say you know running an ssh agent and it and you cannot do that reliably enough with with a kind of way with the kind the kind of setup that windows furnishes you with it's very difficult to manage that it's not like gnome you don't get a keyring management or anything sophisticated like that so you have to like maintain your own ssh agent and at the same time i i like using it as a wsl environment rather than a full-blown distribution because well i like to you know keep things lean and thin and minimal and with a wsl setup that is very easy all all i have to do is go to the app settings and reset the app in case if i break something so that said how do you keep your wits about with wsl so first things first we need to recognize the difference between configuration and data to give you a very simple example my configuration might consist of vimrc so if i do at WebRC, you can see there are, there is a little bit of config here, which which dictates Vim how it should behave. Uh, on the other, and this is something I can easily share on GitHub with you folks. On the other hand, data is a lot more. It can be a lot more private. It can be mutable, and chances are you probably don't want to have it in a remote repo somewhere. To give you an example, my SSH keys, I'm, I cannot even ca print it right now on the screen because, well, <laughs> you shouldn't do that, right? And so what I have done is uh, I've written a small shell script and along with uh, the few configuration files that I use for my Debian setup and I have put them all in a WSL distro. Let's look at the repository itself and it will be clearer as to what I want, mean by it. So these are my config files. Remember how I said uh, your data and your config should be different? Well, it's sort of true, but I'm kind of not listening to myself here a little bit. So you can see that there are a few config files where I have actually embedded my user information. It's convenient and I don't get a lot of spam, so I don't mind you know, leaving, leaving it out on a public repo. But if in case you're more of a private person, you have to find a different way to automate it. But this script here, the WSL setup script is the real deal. The way it works is, um, so let's get back to our terminal. Let me open PowerShell. So this is my Windows environment. Okay, sorry, it opened command prompt for whatever reason. So this is my Windows environment and here are my SSH keys. So all of my SSH keys are actually on my Windows host. I don't want to lose them, but at the same time, I don't want them on a private, on a GitHub repo uh, out on the internet, right? So I just keep them on my machine and if, if they are changing hands between the base operating system and the subsystem, that's fine. So here are my ssh config files and uh, a few other uh, my public and private keys and whenever i reset my app let's say you know uh, i break something on my debian distribution so what i do is i just go here uh, you can uninstall the app and reinstall it it's only like 70 megabytes so again you'll be back to a very clean minimal install like and this is and this allows you to experiment more with 
the Linux user land than you can do on Linux. Ironically, Windows is better for bash scripting and, and tweaking and playing around with your environment than you can do it than you know Linux was. I mean, of course, nowadays you can use things like Docker to do that in a cleaner way, but it is what it is. So the first few part of my uh, first few lines of my script uh, does just that like um, it takes as an argument my windows username the win username is the first argument to the script so for example you see uh, my username here is Ranveer but it does not match my uh, WSL username R so the idea is I'll run something like this WSL setup dot sh run and it will get all the things from my windows directory which is mounted at slash mnt slash sleep sorry i can't speak today slash mnt slash c slash users and then your username so it's a little bit more portable in that sense like if you want to use it and your ssh keys are in your windows home directory you can use it as well and if your ssh keys are elsewhere like if you want to carry them around in a usb stick you just need to modify the path here and you're good to go. Uh, another thing that I do is uh, I change the default U mask. So U mask is what decides what the default permissions on your new directory is going to be. So in WSL, if you create a new directory, it's going to be read, write and executable. Uh, like the permissions on it are pretty, pretty liberal and that annoys me a little bit. Uh, I like to keep things a bit stricter so uh, I modify that a little bit and I set U mask to 077 for the script itself whenever I'm creating new directories or files I've set the U mask to 077 again but I just make this change more persistent by adding this to my dot profile again uh, it makes things very user friendly uh, one of the reasons why i changed the permission to this is because wsl is not great with colors or uh, i think it's the terminal emulator which is not very good with uh, with colors so i i get annoying green bars if a directory is there which is also like very which has a very permissive uh, settings on it right so i don't want that so it's more of an aesthetic decision than a security conscious decision but it is what it is um, the next thing I do is uh, I I add something called SSH scripts to my dot profile. Now, what is an SSH script? Let's look at that. Uh, so this is a very small script that I borrowed from um, GitHub documentation. I'll try to find the link to it, but this is something I looked up ages ago and I, I, I don't think I can find the link to it right now if I try to, but I, I, I'll make an effort for that. So what it does essentially is it, uh, it creates an SSH agent for you uh, in your WSL environment and I'll demonstrate that to you, uh, how that works and everything. And what you can do with this is, well, uh, you don't have to type in your SSH password over and over again if you're using this and let me just demonstrate it to you in a real quick fashion so first let me just clean up so if I do POAUX PSAUX to list all the processes you can see that there is not a lot of things running over here this is your fairly standard WSL setup, but I don't have SSH. So if I do SSH numbers and yeah, okay, this is my website, my remote web server. It asks me for the permission and then it asks me for the password. So I have to like manually type in the bloody password and let's see if I can type correctly tonight. Oh, and voila, I'm in. But this is very cumbersome, don't you think? Like, let's say I, I, dis I got disconnected for whatever reason. Now, if I want to reconnect again, it will prompt me for the password again. And this is annoying. And this is, this hampers your productivity. So what you can do instead is, 
add this little snippet in your dot profile and what it does essentially is it starts something called an SSH agent it's uh, if you guys don't know what an SSH agent is, I, I would strongly recommend researching it because I'm not going to explain it here, but it, maintain it. it maintains it for you. So let me just exit this. Okay, there is a weird error, it doesn't matter. So whenever I start my Debian system the first time, let's say I reboot my computer and I start the WSL session, it asks me for the key first. I mean the passphrase for my key and I add in the passphrase and it stores it that's that so I have a, a couple of SSH keys both are saved with the same passphrase so here they are and now if I do SSH I'm in and I'm out again and now if I do sudo PSAUX you can see that there is a little tiny thing running over here called an SSH agent. And to keep this SSH agent more persistent, to make this whole um, daemon more persistent and more functional, we need to add that little bit of script that I showed, showed you here. So if I do win profile, let me see, I don't have anything sensitive here now, do I? No, I don't. Uh, yeah, you can see that there is your SSH agent and this little bit of script does all the shenanigans there that I need. So that's that. Um, what else do I have here? What else does the script do? Um, it also uh, adds a couple of things that I need like uh, my aliases. So I have a few custom aliases set up for uh, killing the SSH agent. So I have the alias set. Let me just show um, alias SK. Yeah, so I have this alias setup called SK, and what it does is it uh, SSH add minus D, which means it deletes all the SSH keys that were added, and then SSH agent minus K, which kills the SSH agent. So if I type SK, then everything is cleaned up, and now nobody can. SSH into my server without re-entering the passphrase again and I can show this to you by showing this look there is no SSH agent running if I try to SSH it asks me for the passphrase again so I uh, these aliases are by the way stored here so it's in the root of the repository itself. It just takes it from the root of the repository and it adds it to my home, my home folder. Yeah, and it changes the name. It adds a dot. I, I think it does. No, it just adds it to the profile. So it just concatenates it at the end of the profile dot profile file. I have a bunch of other SSH. Uh, sorry, a bunch of other aliases here, and. You don't you might not need them. You can have your own custom file full of all the aliases and uh, I think yeah, and then there are a bunch of things like cleaning up the repository installing the packages that you need I use ansible a bunch So I have a small script that install in, installs ansible open ssh client get uh, I don't think I would need git here because I need to install git to clone the repository to run the repository so that's fine um, and then there's a little bit of cleanup just to you know have a clean repository and then it deletes itself so if I clone this repository to my home directory WSL setup gets removed and voila I'm in a very clean working environment ready to you know get started on whatever project I'm willing to work on that day um, did I miss anything? Yeah, there is. Uh, yeah, there are a couple of other commands that here, which just copies vimrc, renames it to dot vimrc, and places it at my home directory. Same with git config, so I don't have to type in my git config credentials over and over again, uh, and I don't have to you know place in my vimrc over and over again. You can do it with any other software that you use, like if let's say you are using. 
tmux you can have your uh, tmux configurations play placed this way you can have um, pretty much any other rc file honestly you can even tweak uh, other stuff like your ssh configuration your uh, bash rc you get the idea the, the point of rambling for so long was to just let you know that uh, you don't have to be afraid of breaking things especially if you're using some kind of container whether it can be whether it's a docker environment a vm running in the cloud or whatever if you automate everything and if you're smart about how how you automate things um, and admittedly i'm not a smart person but yeah i mean you break things apart right not everything is crammed into one giant shell script um, there are bits and pieces that need to be in your dot profile those are added to your dot profile right these things are supposed to be added to your dot profile so they're added there uh, there are you know a few things that you need, need to add import like your dot ssh in your dot like i did here with my dot ssh file that's done and then there are a few other pieces little bits and pieces that you know you can segregate into different files again totally doable so i hope this inspires you to be more adventurous when it comes to experimentation whether it's on linux bsd any other unix heck even windows um yeah so i thought i would just ramble a little bit about this hope you guys have a nice day